Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is John Jake Gaming on the mic here, coming at you with week number eight action here in the inaugural season of this FCS Dynasty universe. And we have plenty of really good games on tap for you guys here today. We have an incredible five different games that are going to be top 25 matchups, and every matchup has at least one top 25 team so it's going to be a really exciting episode you're going to want to stick a through the entire thing it is going to be a fun one man i hope you guys are ready for it if you are go ahead do me a favor real quick smack that like button hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel by the way and you love what you see as we'll go ahead and get fcs dynasty action officially underway starting with game number one which does end up having the number 11 ranked North Texas Mean Green taking on 23rd ranked FIU. And how about this? To start this episode, you want to talk about very first play of the game? Somebody better go ahead and get his mama because mama, there goes that man. And North Texas immediately striking first, taking a 7-0 lead. But how about this beautiful throw in the end zone? Throwing it right in between two defenders not an easy throw to make by any stretch of the imagination and you know you had to sneak that right in between two defenders and right now this is all knotted up at seven apiece man we got a very exciting game a very close game to start things out here we'll see if this uh tie ends up being dropped here as we see 83 taking it out to the corner he has no one left to beat, and he's going to rock himself into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida International. And the FIU Golden Panthers will take a 14-7 lead. And guys, you'll already know what time it is. If I'm showing spots, if I'm showing something special teams related, then something's about to come down here. As it's a muffed, and North Texas is going to recover. So the mean green with an opportunity to go ahead and tie this game up right before we go into the halftime locker room and we will see just that and now all knotted up at 14 apiece still 130 left to play here in this first half as we see a second turnover adam jones with his first interception of the day he came out from his safety spot and take just took away that check down route completely and that gives the mean green an opportunity to take the lead which they will happily take so north texas will go ahead and have themselves their very first lead of the day that's what we just got to experience is now 21 to 14 game in favor of the mean green how about we go ahead and make it a two possession game now as that is the third turnover that this defense has went ahead and forced so ever since the Golden Panthers took that 14-7 lead, we've seen 21 consecutive unanswered points for none North Texas. And, you know, it's only going to grow even larger. How about we make it 28 unanswered points here as North Texas really started to find a rhythm. As it looks like, unless there is some kind of major act from Jesus himself, we are going to most likely see north texas walk away and win this very first game of the episode so a 42 to 14 game here we'll see if fiu can finally get something going here haven't really seen their offense do much since the first half as their running back will go to work following the blockers and hang on it's a foot race and this is something that this tailback usually wins relatively often as the man dives into the end zone touchdown golden panthers so we'll make the score just just a little bit closer it will now be a free possession game but unless they can drive down you know get some luck this game is most likely going to be over and that should go ahead and seal the deal here four turnovers today for fiu and that was ultimately the difference as North Texas will go ahead and improve to 6-1 and one on the year while FIU does accept their second loss of the season. So you absolutely hate to see it for them. But very competitive first game and a very 
high scoring first game here as well in this one as the mean green continue their national championship hopes alive with this convincing win that they experience here in Sunbelt Conference play it really the difference was those turnovers North Texas only had one turnover FIU had four in this one and those three extra turnovers ends up being the difference as we'll now go ahead and check in on game number two of this episode. We got the 20th ranked Louisiana Lafayette Raging Cajuns taking on a team formerly known as the Indians. We know them as the Red Wolves now. Arkansas State, they come in ranked number 17 in the country. And they're also both teams really trying to stay in the hunt for that Sunbelt Conference Championship. Back in NCAA 06, there was no conference championship for the Sun Belt. It was they were all in, you know, one division and it was just based off of best record. No postseason action to determine who is the conference champ. So both teams definitely still in the hunt as of right now and it's still, you know, any anyone a lot of teams, you know, really still in the race. So a big game between both squads is this could really help either team get a little bit closer to the driver's seat in this conference as i don't want to spoil it just yet but that being said i'm just saying if you win your conference there's uh, more postseason ramifications we'll, we'll just put it that way i'm not gonna spoil it just yet you know because i want to leave that surprise for you guys when we do end up getting to the end of the regular season as that's a nice little step back cheese to be honest as arkansas state races out to a 14 nothing lead here so raging cajuns desperately needs a spark anywhere and i don't think this is what they are looking for almost gets brought back to the crib he does end up being brought down at the 20 yard line but you know the indians they're gonna start in the red zone here just read the quarterback saw the post play you know stepped up made a play and they're gonna cash in pretty quickly as that's a nice spin move to avoid the defender and that was certainly a well-earned touchdown right there in Arkansas State. Imp uh, now up 21 to nothing all of a sudden. Look at that spin move. That is just absolutely nasty. I don't know what you're going to do about that. But the Raging Cajuns still have not been able to get anything going. It's just one of those days, man, where everything goes right for one team and everything goes wrong for another team man just absolutely crazy another turnover for the raging cajuns that really was the last thing that they needed for sure as that's going to be a direct snap that's going to lead to yet another touchdown for the indians in arkansas state proving that they are truly a top 25 team whereas you know louisiana lafayette you know maybe not so much you know they're not that type of team you're not that guy right oh uh, but that being said, Raging Cajuns will eventually get themselves on the board. They will not have the displeasure of having the goose egg on the scoreboard. As that quick run up the right-hand side, Robinson finally breaking really like the glass off the scoreboard, it seemed like. But still down 21 here. Let's see if this defense can help. With the cause, or they're going to do what we're just seeing right here 58 yard touchdown pass one-on-one -on -one coverage the, the db was burnt like barbecue chicken in a 35 7 game here and it's gonna get up to as much as 35 points here now uh, a little bit of this game did end up getting corrupted unfortunately so didn't want to show didn't show all the highlights that i wanted to show you guys but I mean, Arkan it doesn't change the result. Arkansas State still winning big in this one, winning 56 to 10 in this ball game, and Arkansas State improving to five and two. So I already know what some of you guys are going to say in that comment section, man. I'm as surprised as, as you guys are. Alabama State is three and two, and they are ranked in that top 25. I. I don't get it. I now to be fair to Arkansas State in the game, they're free and oh in games that they uh, do not appear in, like for the gameplay, like they're undefeated in sim, right? But 
you know, whenever we get a chance to watch them in gameplay, you know, because of the fact that they are a top 25 ranked squad, you know, they, they're not as impressive, man. So, you know, maybe for times of charm or is Sovereign going to expose them in literally the first offensive play of the game? Mike Davidson, Mike Dawson gets his second interception of the season and it sets up the Southern Jaguars in really beautiful field position to start. I'll even, that ball might have been terribly overthrown and that is certainly costly. And it's gonna help out a Southern squad who has not really done very well in the red zone. They're in the bottom 10 in terms of red zone scoring opportunities, only 60% with either a field goal or a touchdown, but Southern will cash in this time around after the turnover and they will immediately take a 7-0 lead here. As we'll see if Alabama State could do a little bit better. But might have a little bit of a turnover spree here. As Elijah Moore gets the interception. The outside linebacker reading the eyes of the quarterback. And it's already two interceptions for his defense down in the bayou. And that is a dangerous game to play because one thing Southern is very good at, they are do they do a very good job of third down conversions, but they won't convert on this third down though, as Devontae Miller comes screaming off his position at the corner, and no one on the offensive line picks him up. Southern actually does not do anything there, or actually they're gonna go for it here on fourth down. They you know because they were outside of field goal range and. Gonna end up being a touchdown for the Jaguars. 14-0 lead for the boys down in the bayou. As it looks like it's just a numbers game. You know, two, one defender guarding two receivers. One of them was gonna be bound to be open and give credit to this quarterback. He was able to make the right decision. And now the Hornets in a tough spot here early. Down by a couple of scores. Tyler O'Neill does make sure that they get at least some good field position there as this running back doing a great job following the box that's carlos correa or carlos campbell it's already forced to have it you know playing a little bit of mlb the show lately but alabama state will get themselves on the board here they're gonna be up 14 to 7 but this defense just getting shredded here. This might be a touchdown if it wasn't for that last second touchdown saving tackle, but still a really large gain. And it really comes down to effort, it seems like. As that receiver just ran away from essentially the entire defense, something that will definitely need to be addressed through recruiting. Hopefully they do end up doing that eventually here as Southern had this opportunity to get it back to a two score lead but they turn the ball over in a goal line situation and Alabama State does end up getting bailed out there for the time being but they don't do anything with it they can't take advantage of the turnover so it is still 14 to 7, but wait a minute, this could be 21 to 7, as no one is around this defender, and we might be watching a girl in a country song because he is gone. 70 yard touchdown there, making it 21 to 7, and the thing is, Mike Hill could expand this lead even further, and could very well do that. Beautiful throw by Mike Hill who has been a little bit of an underrated quarterback, to be honest. You know, he doesn't have the stats. You know, his team hasn't really been playing that great, but he does a great job here getting them off sides as they're going to get the touchdown. We're going to check the flag here as well as, you know, that guy was obviously off sides. And, I mean, why would you accept that penalty? That was gonna, that was still a touchdown. You had a guy in basically Southern's backfield, and you could still not bring him down. Like, that's crazy. So, Southern now with a 28-7 lead here, and they also get the ball here to start the second half as well. So, we'll see if Mike Hill can take advantage of it. Beautiful brawl! And, you know, sometimes it's just better to be lucky than it is to be good. It was originally deflected. And then another receiver comes by and makes the catch anyways. Like, what do you do there, right? Like, I don't know what you do. 
in that situation, you know. But Alabama State has a chance to at least get some more points on the board. They desperately need it here. They got a third and short from the seven. They decide to pass it here. And quarterback does a really good job finding the tight end. As the Southern Jaguars sent the blitz and just had the perfect play call in order to counter that blitz well. So at least it's back to a free score game. Maybe if Alabama State could get a stop here, it could get a little bit more interesting. But guys being out here, still getting mossed as it was one-on-one -on -one coverage with the safety. Receiver had that outside leverage. So he was able to high point the ball a lot better. And it just leads to yet another touchdown. And I think this may be the last time that we see Alabama State ranked this year. Maybe they'll still have a solid season, get to above 500. You know, you can never, you never know. But in terms of actually being a top 25 team, we we need to we need to stop this, right? Like the fact that they got ranked three separate times, you know, is absolutely insane to me. Like when we seen them, like they played very bad. You know, it, it is not it was not a good look. They weren't it was not close in any of those games. Neither in this game either. As that's another touchdown for the Jaguars. And the Bayou is buzzing after this huge win against the Hornets here. As the Southern Jaguars, they end up winning 49 to 21 and a free game winning streak for them, improving to four and two. So this takes us to the game of the week, which has the number three ranked Eastern Carolina Pirates taking on the SMU Mustangs who come in ranked number 18 in the nation, and they are both. This is the game of the week right here, man, and we are going to watch Ricky McFadden potentially go to work. He's been having a solid year. 1,000 yards passing, 12 touchdowns, three interceptions so far. So he's been a really solid rock for the Pirates, and we'll see what we got in store here as we get things underway. As SMU, they do take their first possession of the game but it's not the offense that makes a difference it's the defense at eastern carolina that gets showed first as they give up a massive touchdown to start the game 87 yards taking it right to the crib and if you're gonna pull an upset at home that is how you do it get that crowd involved early but that being said that might have been the best moment for him because Byron Jones intercepts him on the next possession. And maybe this will get Eastern Carolina going here early as he just read the eyes of the quarterback. One person made the tip and tipped it to another defender, man. That's actually kind of smart now if you think about it. And it sets up ECU with good field position starting in SMU territory, sending it down the sideline. And one-on-one, -on -one, and his guy Comley comes up and makes the catch. How about this throw, and how about this catch? And so all knotted up at seven apiece here. We got ourselves a pretty tightly contested game, but yet we have another interception for SMU here. So you hate to see it. As they were just, they were all over that screen. He just put his body right in front of it. Should have checked out of it. Should have thrown it away. We did not get to see that, unfortunately. As the turnovers just keep happening for the Mustangs. We're not even out of the first quarter yet. And we've already have witnessed three separate turnovers in this ballgame. For SMU, by the way. And yet, despite that, it's still a close game. Still only a three-point difference here. But for the first time, we do see a multi-possession lead as Ricky McFadden able to throw a dot to the back of the end zone. That's now two touchdowns for Ricky McFadden, which brings his totals up to 14 on the year as the defense just really being ferocious here. Just can't get anything going against this team. As that is now four turnovers for Eastern Carolina's defense. Absolutely incredible what we have witnessed so far in the first half. And then it's still a somewhat competitive game despite that. 23-7. You know, they're, they're down, but they're not down bad. Although, this could very well make them down bad. However, a return touchdown for Hassan Hassan goes for 53 yards. 
And now a 30 to 7 lead here. And with now a chance to improve that lead even further. As this is their fourth trip in the red zone. Still have not gotten a red zone TD yet until right about now. Beautiful play action by Ricky McFadden. And threw it in the middle of the end zone. Another touchdown for the Pirates. And it's 37-7. Three touchdowns on the day for McFadden. And the running back who was in the Heisman race until he did get suspended. Because that is a thing in NCAA 06. He got suspended, you know, for a few weeks, and, you know, that took him out of the race, but that doesn't change the fact that he is still an absolutely incredible player. And so it's now 44 to 7 in favor of the Pirates. And now it's at a point now where you could hear a squirrel fart in this stadium. Like, it is bad down here right now. 51 to 7 will be the score at this point as Ricky McFadden does throw an additional touchdown. As they will go ahead, they win convincingly 54 to 7. So we'll see if we see any more blowouts like that or we see some more competitive games. We've seen, you know, already three blowouts in this one, despite the fact that many of them either feature a top 25 team or, you know, two top 25 teams. It's been crazy, but a little bit unique of a game right here. No top 25 teams in this one, but one of the national TV broadcasts. So I had to check on it, of course. North Dakota State, who, despite being undefeated, they are not ranked in the top 25, at least as of yet. We'll see if that changes. And they will go on the road to play against UMass, who, solid football team. We saw them earlier in gameplay. They had a really exciting game against Sanford. So we'll see how that goes as Brian Alexander, the lefty, able to launch this nuke deep down the sideline and it gets inside the five yard line already so a great start for brian alexander he's two for two for 55 yards in this one so far as we go ahead and see brian alexander in the eye formation goes ahead and sends the pitch out to the running back and it becomes a numbers game instantly as the Minutemen just did not have the numbers on that side of the field to combat that triple option. So an easy touchdown for North Dakota State there. And we're going to see another easy touchdown. This time for the defensive side of the football. Quarterback was hit as he threw that pass. So he couldn't put everything on it. And defense was just playing optimistic, man. Getting an interception out of it. 14 to nothing early. But let's see if UMass can yield some of this home crowd. And how is that not a safety? Look at where this quarterback is taken down. It looks like he went backwards, but maybe they gave him forward progress. They had the punt from the one yard line. And, you know, you're starting on looks like the 41 and you're already up 14 to nothing. I would say things are looking pretty good for you right now if you're a big North Dakota State guy. But... Brian Alexander and company couldn't do anything with it. So it stays 14 to nothing here in this first quarter. We're getting to the closing phases of this opening quarter. As the ball is fumbled and UMass is going to recover. Is this what they need to get themselves back on track? As the final play of the first quarter, throwing it downfield. Got his man! And it's going to be a touchdown for the minute, man. Strut that stuff down the sideline as that is a beautiful job getting enough on there despite throwing off the back foot it seemed like you know definitely a lot of pressure that the bison are sending down so it is a one possession game here we might have a little bit more of a competitive matchup after all we'll see how the bison handle this kick return and it's an open lane and all of a sudden we got a foot race and this guy usually wins them in the five touchdown bison in north dakota state 21 to 7 not playing games today neither is this running back who gets a great run downfield there as that is matt davis finally finding a hole in the defense the impact player at running back with his biggest run of the day they get a field goal out of it and that now makes it an 11-point game. Maybe this defense can start showing up here. One of the top 10 defenses in college football in terms of yards around. As that shows a little bit right there is Darius Holbert. 
but defensive end comes by and makes the sack. So we get the stop and a big moment for the Minutemen here. Touchdown here could very well make this a one possession game, except they forget about the football. Oh, an untimely turnover for the Minutemen as North Dakota State, after the fumble recovery, they're going to take over on UMass's side of the field. And when that happens, you know, North Dakota State, they usually cash in on those opportunities. That's why they're so great in real life, and that's why they're really good here as well. But Brian and Alexander finding out that they are not going to give that touchdown up without a fight. They find that out the hard way. So now third and goal from the one yard line gonna no it's a play action and UMass is all over it five sacks on the day for UMass now that is a surprise this North Dakota State offensive line one of the best in college football and so the Bison do have to go ahead and settle for a field goal there and it's still a two possession game it's still relatively close you love to see that 24 to 10 but y'all know what time it is. You know this impact player. He's feeling himself. And UMass, they don't cover properly. Missing a tackle. And now there goes that man. Somebody grab his mama because that is two touchdowns for this receiver in special teams. That is all special teams right there. And the biggest lead of the day, 31 to 10. And it is a good thing that defense and special teams showing up because this is this was not the best performance for the Bison offensive line, even though they are up big right now. It still doesn't change the fact that, you know, this offensive line doesn't create the holes that it usually creates. And, you know, Brian Alexander, you know, he's been hit a lot in the passing game. You know, that's, you know, something uh, unique as well. But on the third and ten, they don't send any pressure and just drops it right in the bucket brian alexander finally getting to a hundred yards passing and this was a tough throw double coverage by the way that was double coverage that this man threw it into and his receiver still comes down and makes a catch and is going to get a touchdown here as well over to marcus johnson and it's becoming very clear at least to the umass faithful here that we are going to see uh we're probably gonna see north dakota state win this game now it's a matter of what the score is and can umass can they make the score a little bit better you know get some garbage times points something like that and that just doesn't happen in fact it goes the opposite direction we see aaron whitehead get a pick six here to seal things up as north dakota state they win convincingly once again 45 to 17 confirming what we already know they're a very good football team uh, they need some respect on their name for sure as yeah still not ranked hopefully this uh when we get to week number nine uh at the conclusion of the games in this episode maybe they'll finally get that respect and get that first ap top 25 appearance but one game that i certainly had circled on the calendar is this matchup between james madison and temple a top 15 matchup James Madison's been really good as of late, you know, four and one, but Temple has been undefeated. This is actually the first time that we see Temple as well in gameplay since all the way back in week number one, when they were the opening game for when they went on the road against Idaho State. That was episode two. And now we're on like episode nine, I believe. So it's been a minute when we've seen Temple in gameplay definitely a measuring stick moment for this james madison program we'll see if they're up for the challenge as joe toupee he's gonna launch a nuke down the sideline and finds joe mcdonald he found the farm there as that is a massive gain downfield now thankfully for the dukes they do force a field goal but big thing here is kenny raymer actually does get shaken up uh, on this drive they had something going going there so that and this is going to be an issue i think this was really uh was going to be the biggest test for james madison this season uh not any of the other teams that were on their schedule but how is that offensive line going to hold up you know is kenny raymer and 
whoever is playing quarterback is he gonna have enough time because i'll tell you what temple temple is gonna score their points there's no doubt about it we already seen them score a touchdown here is now 10 nothing that's willie ferguson who is in that final heisman finalist conversation as kenny raymer when he does get that time he's gonna make beautiful plays like that throwing to his right he finds a man on that post pattern and it goes for a really big gain but now we'll see if this running game can get going as well and this has been much needed man running down the sideline brought down inside the 20 and here comes the dukes of james madison this team can play they are a very talented team they just gotta come away with points here third and ten as Raymer drops back, but he fumbles the football, and Temple is going to recover it. They are going to recover the football here as they send the cornerback blitz. Offensive line failed to pick it up. And an opportunity to make this a one-possession game, even get a field goal, something. You know, just, just not it. And Joe Tupé going to make them pay for it on the other side as that is a beautiful throw to the back of the end zone touchdown temple and it looks like they are really flexing their muscles here right now as joe Tupé just drops it right on the money somewhere to where the defensive back couldn't do anything with it there was nothing that could have been done to uh, you know make any contested throw on that and even worse no news kenny raymer he's gonna throw his very first interception of the season we haven't seen him throw a pick all year long but finally this 10th full defensive backfield they finally break that after six games by the way uh he was one of the last players uh in college football down at the fcs level to not throw an interception and be the full-time starter right so really that was a really impressive stat uh that's no longer standing though and temple with a 20 to nothing lead here could very well be 27 to nothing if they're not careful as joe Tupé. Throwing another dot right over the middle of the field. Get some yards after the catch as well. As it puts the Owls in the red zone here. They've been really successful at this. Especially when we see them in gameplay as well. As Willie Ferguson takes the direct snap. Breaks a couple of tackles and gets into the end zone. Touchdown Temple. And how about this run by Willie Ferguson. That is why he is a Heisman finalist. Makes one man miss off the spin. Trucks over a second defender as well. So 27 to nothing. And how about 34 to nothing now? Willie Ferguson, just absolute baller in this game. And it looks like unless James Madison can get something going here, it's it's not looking pretty for, for the Dukes, man. Uh, I was hoping that this game would be a lot more competitive as hang on now james madison they actually get a turnover so hang on maybe they won't win the game but a chance here to maybe go ahead and you know do something but unfortunately doesn't happen temple does win big so now we jump into yet another top 25 matchup that i had planned for you guys in this episode we got the number eight ranks ohio bobcats taking on the number 16 ranks central michigan chippewas in a cold and windy night here just 50 degrees we're looking at like 40 to 45 with wind chill as you know the winds are swirling anywhere between 15 and 30 miles tonight so you know we'll see how this quarterback for ohio fans will with danny graves 744 yards five touchdowns a few picks they they're not a team that emphasizes the pass as much so you know it's gonna be really interesting to see how this goes as ohio will go ahead and yeah that's what i was talking about man those wins Playing a role early as Matt Coles gets the interception and is gonna, you know, help the Chippewas defense out. You know, that they were driving downfield as well. So a first and ten for the Chippewas following the interception. We'll see if they can build off of it as Travis Hill tries to launch one downfield himself. He was looking for the impact player at wide receiver, but Adam Holman doing a fantastic job going ahead and running step by step there as that is going to be the first interception of the day thrown by travis hill as we get into 
the you know middle of the second quarter here. still no one has scored yet uh it's been a pretty sloppy day so far you know it's sloppy when you see more turnovers than there is actual like scoring plays you know and that's even like accounting for field goals which i mean field goals themselves you know they can be boring that's why i hardly show them uh unless you know it actually directly affects the result obviously right but uh, still no one's scoring yet and we're getting ready to jump into halftime hopefully someone can find the end zone eventually and how about this as a way to get on the scoreboard oh my 17 yard touchdown for smith as the tailback he just barreled through some defenders right there and it does help give ohio the lead going into halftime as we chuck into the third quarter here yet another interception it's been that kind of day as central michigan still being blanked at the moment and travis hill i i don't know what he was looking towards to be honest with you, you know he had multiple receivers open downfield uh but he wanted the touchdown uh number three was wide but naked open didn't get it to him just not a good read for travis hill right so 10 nothing lead for the bobcats a chance to make it 17 to nothing and sure enough we get just that Danny Graves throws a touchdown pass in this ball game as it was a little bit more of a defensive matchup for sure but the Ohio Bobcats they should remain in the top 10 thanks to this victory going on the road especially playing against a top 25 team that is never an easy thing to do but you know Ohio gotta give them credit they found a way to do just that and it's going to be a 17 to nothing victory for the Ohio Bobcats here over. And it's also, you know, been in really interesting to see. Total offense was really a big key here as well. Ohio was moving the ball really well. Central Michigan, though, only 165 total yards. Not to mention, they also lost a turnover battle. It's just simply not a winning formula whatsoever. So before we go ahead and jump into the final game of this episode, let's take a look around the country and check out some scores from games that we did watch here today as we start with the number one team in America, the San Diego State Aztecs. They went on the road to play against South Dakota State and took care of business with relative ease, winning 41-13, to and that is to help them remain undefeated here in this inaugural season. But we do also get a upset on the horizon as well as Southeast Missouri State. They've been on a tear to start the year, but they will lose here at home against Youngstown State. The Penguins finding the way to win it in the fourth quarter, winning 24 to 10, 20 in order to improve to four and three. Now, as for UCF in Conference USA play, they played up against the Towson Tigers. And Towson will lose to Central Florida. 42-21, the Golden Knights improving to 5-1. Kent State should also remain in the top 25 as well as they played up against a pretty good Rhode Island squad, winning 17-10. This is only Rhode Island's second loss over the course of the season. Kent State improving to 4-2. Ball State, meanwhile, in action, taking on Western Illinois at home. And Ball State... While not the most impressive victory, still ends up winning 23-7. The Leverbacks will fall to 1-5. As for the Akron Zips in another Maction game, they went to Terre Haute, Indiana, home of some of the greatest cross-country championships uh, here in the United States. And Akron wins 35-7, with the Sycamores still searching for their first win of the season. As for Montana, they just cracked into the top 25 at number 25 in the country. They played up against Northern Arizona in a rivalry game. And Montana does come out on top, 36-32. The Montana Grizzlies now improved to 5-2. As for Utah State, they are currently sitting at number 21 in the country. But they went on the road against Northern Colorado. And those Bears gave up a pretty good fight. But Northern Colorado still searching for that first win, losing 20-9. As for the Buffalo Bulls, who were in the top 25, but after their loss to Akron last week fell out, they played up against Illinois State and were able to bounce back, winning 42-9. Up next, we got Mid-Tennessee State, who 
Actually, has only played four games so far. They went on the road to play against Florida Atlantic. And FAU will fall to 4-3 and three after their loss. Meanwhile, the Blue Raiders now, with their touchdown victory, improved to 4-1. and one. As for Montana State, they took on Sacramento State in the New Look Pack 10 play. And Montana State, they looked really good in this game, winning 44-14. The Montana State t team now 3-4 and, and on a two-game winning streak. Center. Whereas Sacramento State, fall to 2-4. and four. As for UNLV, they were able to take care of business against Southern Missouri State, winning 45-14 on the road. As for the Rice Owls, they also do the same, beating Villanova at home 24-6. As for New Mexico State, they took on the winless Oral Roberts program, and it is no problem for the Aggies as New Mexico State wins 44-5. That is even with a safety and Oral Roberts was somehow able to get. That's something uh, rare to see. We only seen one safety uh, here in this uh, game so far in this season. Eastern Michigan did take on Southern Illinois, though, and winning 45-7 on the road. The Salukis falling to 1-5. So the final game that I had for you guys here today is this conference matchup here in the New Look ACC. We got Florida A&M going on the road in Cowell Stadium, located in Durham, North New Hampshire, taking on the New Hampshire Wildcats, which some of you guys in the Discord have been saying how impressed and unpleasantly surprised that y'all guys have been, uh, considering they are ranked number nine in the country as Carlos Montoya. We know he's a bad man. 18 touchdowns, three interceptions. Yo, a really big reason why we do see New Hampshire ranked as highly as they are but don't discredit this defense now this defense has also been making some pretty big plays downfield as well as we will go ahead um first highlight not the offense that gets so much attention and love but the defense setting up the offense really well inside the 30 as now Carlos Montoya sitting in the shotgun. He's going to drop back the pass here. Looking over the left-hand side, but it's going to be broken up. He was looking for his star receiver, William Patterson, trying to get him in the back of the end zone. But nice job playing the football and also doing so without drawing a penalty. That's not an easy thing to do at all, but... Montoya will end up getting intercepted by Jared Bolimi. It's a fourth interception thrown by Carlos Montoya over the course of this season. Good job by the defense. After being put in a pretty compromising position, to be honest with you. And now, starting inside the 10, we'll see if the Rattlers can at least get out of the, uh, the back of the end zone. And they're going to do more than that. As that is a huge throw downfield, one of the biggest plays of the entire season so far. A 94-yard touchdown pass. This man was throwing from his own end zone. He had a man open downfield, and luckily was able to get it to his guy. So, a lot of talk about New Hampshire, but don't sleep on Florida A&M. Their defense, you know, might not be that great, but they're, you know, they're playing hard today. They are playing really hard today as William Patterson does get his first catch of the day, but he forces the, he puts the ball on the ground. And are we looking at a potential upset alert here? They have a chance to do just that. Third and goal from the seven, a chance to make this a two score game, but a throw towards the left hand side, it's intercepted as well. Oh, you hate to see it. You hate to see it, Brandon Terrell first interception of the day second of the season if that just wasn't a turnover we're gonna have 10 to nothing at least but instead inside the five new hampshire with a chance to tie things up and look who gets open william patterson all by himself he's gonna strut it into the end zone celebrating and that's the longest pass in ncaa history at least according to ncaa 06 uh, do not have the updated record books. Uh, so these uh, records are as of 2005. Um, I, maybe the updated records could eventually be reflected uh, in the uh, NCAA 06 next mod. I don't know um, if that happens yet. I don't have the most updated version. But 
yeah, I gotta say, man, got a pretty competitive game here. We're still in the first quarter. It, it seems like we had, you know, a lot unfold for us here so far. As now Montoya looking to finally give his team the lead. And we will see just that. Touchdown, New Hampshire. As Carlos Montoya saw the post route on the outside and threw it right where his receiver can make a play. And so now a, a little bit of a milestone for Carlos Montoya. 20 touchdowns on the season. As now we'll see if Florida A&M can respond. They take a shot at the end zone. They don't get it. But they still have an opportunity to tie this game up potentially. As gets it out to the running back. And all of a sudden this game is all knotted up. It's all tied at 14. You know Florida A&M can very well win this game. And if they do could be the biggest upset that we've seen in this series at least in gameplay at least in gameplay right so that, that's something i also gotta note but that being said willie patterson not wasting any time gets the kick return and brings it all the way back as mama there goes that man for a huge touchdown it's 94 yards by the way he ain't playing these games not today and now 21 to 14 lead and Florida A&M, they can't respond. So still down by the touchdown. Desperately needing to stop. And now, this is when things get really dangerous. It's when Carlos Montoya really starts to find a groove and really starts to find a rhythm. We're certainly getting that right here. It's now 30 seconds left. You know, they still got one timeout. Another throw here. And how about this effort? There was three, four defenders here. He wanted the end zone more. He straight up wanted it more, and he got it. Look at this throw. Well, the throw wasn't that impressive. You know, getting it out to the check down. Good decision, though. One, two, three. There are four defenders in the vicinity, and nobody was able to bring him down. And listen, the Radwars aren't doing bad on offense as well. Like, they got 14 points here in the first half. Like, that's really not all that bad. But you can't win any games putting up essentially a 40 burger getting put on you and we're not we're not even in the done with the game we still have a whole second half that that needs to be played as listen there was a little bit of a scare but it looks like new hampshire they are really going to come out here and really set a tone now as that is now another touchdown pass 42 to 14 it's been it, it is uh you know just really impressive to watch you know a team that could very well be on its way to winning a national championship i mean if i had to put my money on it don't sleep on this team right here this new hampshire squad they can do some things they can do some really special things as that is another big throw deep downfield 49 to 14 and now florida a&m back in the their own end zone and a pick six four turnovers today for florida a&m they had their chances. They had their chances to get additional points on the board and make this more competitive. But, you know, when everyone is firing all cylinders, you know, it's just hard to beat. New Hampshire, biggest score of the week, by the way. They put up 77 and win huge. So we get to the conclusion of week number eight. And we, we know things are starting to heat up because we're starting to see those bowl rankings come in here man as well as other top 25 rankings as well as we see ohio they are now up to that number seven spot we'll get the top 25 polls pretty much you know pretty stable at the top right now i mean not really uh, much movement akron and ohio uh did end up swapping spots uh so nobody really uh moving anywhere as of right now things are pretty firm as of right now James Madison does move down a few spots despite taking a 41 point loss, but they will still remain in the top 25 as of right now. Meanwhile, we see Montana and Kent State uh, really uh, starting to make big push. Buffalo and Tulane, they're in the top 25. Southeast Missouri State also remaining in the top 25 despite their loss to Youngstown State. And to round things out, we see Idaho and North Dakota State make their way into the top 25. They will be re-entering SMU, remaining in the top 25 as well. They jump down to number 24 in the country. 
as we check out the teams with additional details as you know we see some youngstown state they leapt up to the point where they are now receiving votes and so is tennessee martin and tennessee state as well as for how things are shaking out as of right now for the heisman watch right now we still pretty much the same for the first two brian brown's currently sitting in first and kerry williams sitting in second place but we do see a fantastic surge for William Fer Willie Ferguson, the senior running back from Temple. He had a big performance against James Madison last week. He now has almost 1,000 yards rushing, 930 yards, 13 touchdowns on the year. And two more touchdowns, you know, four receiving. So 15 total touchdowns for the man that gets him to third. Richard Wade, meanwhile, he uh, helped his team get a big win against South Dakota State. Uh, but he falls to fourth in the Heisman race. And then the freshman sensation, Ikeda Woods, the freshman quarterback for Georgia Southern. He is still in the top five. But that being said, he is slipping a little bit. He's now down to number five in the Heisman race after his team did lose to Northwestern State on the road. They lost 41 to 18, but still having an excellent rookie campaign. And he still is the only freshman that is currently in the Heisman race. Despite being, by the way, only five foot six. That's crazy. So in terms of the players of the week in the NCAA, we'll go ahead and take a quick look at that as well. And offensively, Willie Ferguson is here and no surprises there. He was a workhorse for the Temple Owls in their matchup against James Madison. His team ended up winning by a final score of 48 to seven. The man had 24 carries for 324 yards and five touchdowns. He was a difference maker in that ball game. But meanwhile, on the defensive side of football, Darryl Smith won it from Northern Arizona. The sophomore linebacker, again, flying all over the field. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he I thought he won defensive player uh, of the week in the past, but I guess not. Uh, so Darryl Smith taking care of business. 21 tackles, three TFLs, a sack. Two forced fumbles to go with it and a touchdown, but despite all of that, his team still doesn't win. They lose to their rival Montana by one score, a four-point loss that's heartbreaking as his team does fall back to 500. So this now takes us to week number nine here in this inaugural season of the FCS, and things are starting to heat up. After the week nine episode, we'll have five more weeks before we start getting into postseason action. So we are much closer to the start of the postseason than we were when we first started the year. And I hope you guys are out here enjoying the content. If you are, make sure you go ahead, smash that like button, hit subscribe as well. If you do happen to be brand new, shoot, even leave a comment for your boy. You know, let me know how y'all feeling about this week eight action. But with that, I will see you guys next time with week 9 content in this series. And with that, this is John Shake Gaming on the mic signing off. I'm hoping you're all out there having a good one. Take care, everybody.